Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of In The Beat, and more specifically, our produce-like series where we sort of unpack the style of legendary producers, and then we make a beat in that very style. Today, I've got a special one for you because we're gonna go through the style of the one and only Large Professor, AKA Extra P, AKA Large Bro. You might know him by a lot of different names. Large Professor is a producer from Queens, and let me tell you, he's made a ton of the old school hits that you and I love. He's been on my radar ever since my obsession with Nas's Illmatic began, because I found out that he produced It Ain't Hard To Tell, One Time For Your Mind, and Half Time, which are three of my favorite songs on the album. Uh, he's a boom bap guy, and his credits are insane. You should really take a look. But he's probably best known as a founding member of the hip hop group Main Source, and he's been making good music for a really long time, since the early 80s, in fact. So Let's take a look at what his style is like and then we'll try our hand at it. Sound good? Let's do it. First and foremost, his style is mostly built around sampling, so obviously that's what we're gonna do today. But for your sample selection, you really wanna go for like jazzy, sort of funky stuff, like the Fatback Band or Nat Adderley or maybe a little Dizzy Gillespie. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we're gonna be working in that boom bap zone. So, you know, it's gonna be roughly between 90 and 100 beats per minute. Let's set it to, I don't know, 92, just for fun. Now, typically when I'm making like these boom bap style beats, I like to start with the drums first. And if you wanna sound like Large Professor, you gotta use drum breaks, because that's where the majority of his drum sounds come from. You know, older soul records and funk records especially. So, and today we're working with a very famous collection of drum breaks uh, from something called Funky Drummers Volume 1. And just take a listen to what this sounds like. It's so good. So as usual, let's open up a little drum rack here and start dragging some of these hits in. And we can just adjust the flags for our start end point. We can just use this first kick, right? And if you hold Alt and you drag, you can just copy it over to another pad here. Let's call this snare. And then let's also get a hat going here. Now, when you're working with drum breaks that are kind of spacey and have a lot of reverb on them, like this one here, when you're working at a tempo that's slower than what was the drum break was recorded at, you can get this kind of gated reverb sound, like. You might not want that. And then if you try to sort of squelch it by making a really short delay or just fading it out, then it also sounds a little bit odd and it doesn't sound like all of the drum sounds match as well as they used to. There's actually two ways that you can attack this. One of them is that you can lower the pitch of the drum break so that the reverb lasts as long as it needs to ring out in order to make it all the way to the next sample. The other thing that you can do is keep it at the original key like we're gonna do here today and make sure that you're using the hats that correspond with the kicks and snares. So every time there's a kick that hits, you use the hat in the original sample that comes right after the kick so that it sounds most naturally coupled together. And then the same thing with the snare. You use the hat that comes right after the snare. So here's the snare here. You're gonna use this hat because you can still hear the snare ringing out in that second hat, so it has this way of just making everything sound a little bit more natural. Now that kick isn't quite sounding right at the moment, so we need to process it a little bit. And so I like to just bring out a lot of the high end of the kick, and so it sounds you know, like more like you'd expect a hip hop kick to sound. Maybe add a little bit of saturation. And sometimes I even like to add a compressor like here where you've got a really slow attack to just let that transient all the way through and kind of decrease the amount of influence that the room sound has on the direct signal. Just a matter of taste though. And it also adds a little bit more punch to uh, kicks that are recorded in this fashion. So as for the sampling portion of all of this, one thing that I noticed that Large Professor does, and it was actually, I think, in a Rhythm Roulette episode. If you haven't seen that, you should go check it out. It's awesome. But one thing that I saw that he did that made an impression on me, and it made a lot of sense, was that he would have his drum break all chopped up and ready to go with like a basic beat together. And then he would 
play the record as it was, just like the normal record on top of the beat. You know, even though things didn't really line up per se, it was just listening for things that catch your ear over the top of the drums already. So let's let's do that. And today we're working with a sample. It's Winton Kelly, a record called Don't Explain. Really nice record. And we're just gonna do the same thing. We're gonna have our drums looping and we're gonna uh, try to pick out a part that sounds good. Okay, that was fast. Right where that guitar chord comes in. That kind of chromatic thing right there. So let's let's latch onto that and see if we can make the whole beat out of that. Now the only part that's not making sense to me is I like the way that the bass is moving with the drums right now, but the little piano melody here isn't quite lining up. But if I move that sample over, the bass won't line up anymore. And so I'm thinking we might need to get a little bit creative with this. So if, if I can just filter this one little chop here, like we can apply a little low end theory to just this one chop, then we can extract the bass line, have that continue and then remove the piano. So I've got a track here just with like a low pass filter on it. Let's see if we can make a little variation. There's two versions of this chord progression in the sample, which is always your best friend when you're sampling, by the way, because then you can create these little variations to make your beat more interesting. If we just change the ending a little bit on the second loop. Ooh, you hear that little like piano melody at the end there? We could actually just take this little piece here, put it at the end and make that our variation. So this is kind of like an upright bass. So we're not getting a whole lot of that deep low end that you'd expect from a hip hop song. One thing that Large Professor likes to do is add in like a really deep sub bass on the kick hits. And I think it would actually work well in this song. So if we just pull up in like a nice deep bass sound, this is basically just kind of like a saturated sine wave. It's really simple. Check out what happens when we start adding it on these kick hits. And when I've heard Large Professor do this, he'll keep the sub bass at the same time as the kicks, just let him ring out a little bit, but keep it really simple. Like he doesn't have a lot of bass melodies happening at the same time as you know the sample because all of the interest in the beat is coming from the sample, right? And so all you need that to do is to just help it drive that low end a little bit and um, you know get the subs going in the car, right? One pattern you'll notice with a lot of these legendary producers is that they know exactly what to take away and what to keep and you end up having a production that's simple but it's got all the essentials there. And that's the tough part about producing sometimes is figuring out what the essentials are. Now, one way that you can do that is to just try adding a couple of things and then see if it works. And so what I'm gonna do is play on top of what we've already got a little bit further down in the sample and see if we can pick out any little interesting things that happen. Ooh, that's kind of cool. So I could maybe mark this down and we'll continue playing and see if there's anything else we could add. Ooh, that's cool too. Like this little piece here. I love this. Ooh, and this one could be cool like on the on the repeat. So if I just duplicated all of this and I took this away on here, now we've got some nice variations going. And one thing about Large Professor too is that he loves to add in like these brass textures. So I thought we could maybe try to throw in like a fat back band sample. I gotta learn.
Ooh, okay, do you hear that little... It's like a little brass roll or something. I wonder if we can maybe put this somewhere in the beat. Or maybe this could be at the top of the beat when it repeats, and then we could like just throw a little delay on there. And then filter out some of the bass so it doesn't conflict too much with what we've got. And you know, you, you know, you don't always know if something's gonna work, but you just gotta experiment a little bit, and that's what we're doing here. Yeah, just kind of like that. Let's see if this works. And maybe we could even kind of pan it across like the stereo image a little bit. That could be another idea. So let's try something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's 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 hear how this sounds. And boom, there we have it. You know, I hope you enjoyed the LP vibes today. If you guys have any requests about who we should feature in the next Produce Like series, please let us know down below. And as always, happy sampling, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.